Legends TV. An eclectic mix as always. We're going to have the music of Sage. We're going to have indie wrestling with VSK and Mr. Martinez. And radio personality, my co-host, Steve Ludwig. How are you today, Steve? Fine, Sir Evan of Ginsburg. I'm not so sure about the personality part, but I do okay. do a radio show here and there. The yes. humble, Steve. The humble. And tell us about your show right here at the Madhouse. Uh, well, we have um, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Beatles Hour with Steve Ludwig. And um, it's you talk about eclectic, it's Beatles group solo dialogue from their movies and things like that. And I also have, and you can also listen on planetludwig.com, but the live, or well, the first broadcast of the Beatles show is iTunesUSA.com. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's available on planetludwig.com. And a big show on planetludwig.com on Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture is a friend of the show here, Gary DiCarlo of Na Na Hey Hey Kiss Him Goodbye fame. What a he's, great guy. He's a fantastic guy. He's got a new CD coming out called Hot Stuff, and we did a CD listening party. So that's available now at planetludwig.com. And guys like Gary DiCarlo, many times we think of them as oldies acts, but they're still out there performing. They're still out there recording. He, they're still active and vibrant. Yeah, he's had two new CDs in the past 18 months. Wow. Uh, so and he's got a that's lot to say. That's two more than we had. That's, that's, that's two right. more than we'll ever have. That's right. That's right. <laughs> in in uh, sixty-one years. No, and he's got a lot to say. He's he's really he's a very cool guy, and he speaks his mind through his through his music. That's right. And you're active as well. And you're actually doing some uh, film shorts, and we're going to see one today. Why, why don't you set this up for us? Well. Um, what I miss, I'm a music lover as you are, and what I miss is the album art. That's when we right. used to get the albums. And especially, uh, the album art said so much about the beauty of what's inside. You know who was famous for album art? Yeah. Blue Note Records, the jazz label. Beautiful artwork. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, as we're going to see in, in this short, talk about the beauty, the art of album art. That's right. And so much find your records that. also. Um, they had some beautiful artwork as well. I just went to a, a Boogaloo concert at uh, Lincoln Center with Joe Batan, Pete Rodriguez, Richie Ray. It, it was hot the other mm -hmm. night. So, uh, yeah, album art is it's almost a lost art because everything today is downloaded yep. and even on CD it's much tinier of course but mm. I actually have framed albums in my apartment it, it looks like a Jewish deli you know <laughs> but, uh, you, you do have some corned beef and cabbage uh, that's sandwiches right. hanging around too that's right. I, I noticed but they're a few years old that's right so we're gonna we're gonna check out your video anything else um, you want to uh, tell us about it well just that I, I hope that people appreciate the the work that went behind making these album covers and I, I really looked for the most beautiful artistic yeah. covers I could find on the Some internet. of these are particularly striking and memorable. I mean beautiful. You scoured the internet for these I believe. I scour the internet to get the creme de la creme of album covers right. and I hope our audience appreciates all the hard work that went into this video. That's right. So this video is directed and narrated by Steve Ludwig. Check it out. Hey everybody, for Evan Ginsberg's Legends TV, it's Steve Ludwig, and it's time once again for another edition of... I forgot what we called this, but before we get started... Hi Joyce! Now these are all album covers. Album covers, record album covers. For all of you doll lovers, here's a creepy one. Amen, how about Jesus Christ? Let's have a close-up of that little noggin. Look at that, nice boy Eric, there you go. Marcy Sings for $1.98. What does she do for 10 bucks? Never mind. Oh, and little Marcy also pollutes the minds of little children. Look at that poor little girl. I think she's gonna... Okay. We have just found the creepiest album cover ever made. Uh, Jim and Tammy? Wait. They... That can't be... No, that can't be the Tammy Faye. I don't recognize it without her mascara running down her cheeks. Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts, I don't want to touch that hand. And here is a man with no arms or legs. No arms or legs, okay? I hope his organ works, though. And I love a song with a good hook. 
And don't worry, everybody. I realize I am going straight to hell, but song with a good hook? Okay. And I wonder who has the shortest song on this album, huh? The Crusaders of Illinois and the Singing Midget. It's got a short song on there, okay. And Joe Atkinson has the shortest album ever made. And thank you, Dave Starr, for words to live by. Okay, it's time to, oh, Nutricize, there was Nutricize. Okay, and hey, while you're down south, check out Lenny D. It's, uh, you'll get a little wet listening to him. I really have nothing to say about this album cover, but I just felt it belonged in this for some reason, okay. Uh, and Bob Larson, of course, speaking out about combing your hair perfectly. Uh, no, you don't, girls. You do not, girls. Come on now. Pam, I'm sorry. The answer is no. However, Vasily doesn't have to worry about getting married, huh? He's got it all set up here. Nothing says Tijuana picnic like Colonel Sanders. And nothing says Christmas like Colonel Sanders. Finger licking good. And that uh, is. Eh. Buy my album, okay, Bruno, where, 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 okay, Bruno. And listen, you know, Jerry Ayers, I am so jealous of you. All the chicks want you, Jerry. Oral Roberts, uh, Phil, I wonder if he has a cut on this album. At, oh, hey, well, hello, Jess. Yes, okay. Uh, well, Mrs. Mills, um, before I go to the party, who's going to be there? Art Link Letter. Oh, it's oh, it's the tip of another Art Link Letter amphetamine party. Oh, that's what we get from Art Link Letters is amphetamine. Well, at least we will have some nice pineapple and ham. Guys, you do remember, these are all album covers. <laughs> okay. And uh, Viva La Creepy is more like it. And at the party, performing music, of course, Shep Fields. This um, man or woman is going to the party, as is this man, woman. This child, poor Gary D. Bradford, I have a feeling that he did not have the happiest childhood. I might be going out on a limb, but I just feel it. And, let's face it, I thought ukuleles were going to be on the party, but they're not. They're on tour. Oh, and, um, goodbye, Joyce. And back to Evan Ginsberg's Legends TV. Welcome to the Rehab Center located at 2025 Brentwood Road in Brentwood, New York. At the center we offer chiropractic services, acupuncture, and physical therapy. We take most major medical, no fault, and workers' comp insurance. If you need these types of services, contact the offices at 631-234-4949. That's 631-234-4949. Welcome to the Rehab Center located at 2025 Brentwood Road in Brentwood, New York. At the center we offer chiropractic services, acupuncture, and physical therapy. We take most major medical, no fault, and workers' comp insurance. If you need these types of services, contact the offices at 631-234-4949. That's 631-234-4949.
got back with Legends TV, and wow, I, Steve's recovering from the amphetamine I, party. Yeah, I thought yeah. We were, it seemed like we just went to a commercial or something. I'm really yes. tripping out here. That's right. Oh, That's great. right. And Steve, when, yes. we, when, when we were in the car on the way to the um, gig this morning, the show this morning, I should say, um, we, were, we had a long discussion about our mutual love and support of animals. You know, oh, yeah. in, in, in the media lately, there's been a lot of controversy over hunting and everything, but we're mm -hmm. an art show. We're not going to get too political. Right. But you, you're a dog owner, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you love pets and animals. Yeah, I mean, I, I really do love dogs mostly, but I love all animals. But you know what I, I really gets me is when you see, what, I, what really moves my heart is when, we see animals, especially wild animals, just in their natural habitat. That's right. They're at such at peace, and it's so natural, with the settings around them. I don't know how you feel about that. But. When you see a lit, sleek, you know, animal out in the wild, I don't mm -hmm. think there's too many things in life that's more beautiful yeah. and uh, Un spiritual. Yeah. Unencumbered by the material things that we humans like to throw in there. That's right, yeah, just the out there in nature mm -hmm. and um, almost ballet-like, graceful. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, um, the flow of nature, I guess we could say. That's it's right. The beauty, the flow of nature. And Why do you bring it up, Evan? Because I looked all over the internet to find some beautiful footage to share with the viewers because um, many of my friends are you know, true animal supporters and... Uh, I used to be a house rabbit owner, by the way, and uh, house rabbit society, well worth mm -hmm. looking into. But, um, you know, just animals in general are beautiful, and as you stated earlier, especially in their natural setting. Yeah. So Unencumbered, I think, was the word. Unencumbered. By the material. Try to keep the vocabulary a little lower for me, though. Cause, okay. Uh, unencumbered. Yeah, four, right. four syllables is a little low. That's, right. that's for, Thanks. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to a video that... Did you scour the internet? I scoured, I did with scoured my the internet mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. find the most beautiful nature footage. I'm, I'm a big fan of Animal Planet as well. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. whenever I see like um, some beautiful animal on Animal Planet, I go, I'd love to have one of those. And then I remember I live in a one-bedroom apartment and it's never going to work. Right, right. Not going to yep. quite work. No. Like a giraffe in a one-bedroom apartment is yeah. just never going to happen. Unless you have a skylight, I think. That's then right. perhaps it would work. That's right. But you really shouldn't have it in a one-bedroom apartment because they belong in the wild. That's right. <laughs> so, folks, we're going to go to this video, and you will truly appreciate the natural beauty of animals in their natural habitat, their natural setting. Enjoy. Evan, it's okay. Evan, I know it's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. the beauty of yeah. animals. That's right. Get, all, get that's, yourself together. That's right. As Steve walks across the camera. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Steve, that was your favorite Luigi the Bunny. What? <laughs> yeah. Luigi the Bunny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luigi the Bunny is the In his bunny. natural uh, setting. He is the bun. That's he is right. the man, right. the bunny. That's right. And as always, we'd like to thank Johnny Video for, uh, you know, his epic filmmaking. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I do, I wonder if Luigi the Bunny has a surprise birthday party set today for Johnny Video, because today is... Johnny Video's birthday. Johnny, happy birthday, Johnny Video. Right. So if you notice, the rabbit crashed into the camera at one point, <laughs> took a wrestling bump, you know, and recovered. So uh, I'm hoping that on the uh, menu is not, like... Cooked rabbit or something. Yeah, we would hope today. not. We no. would hope not. But we'll find out next time if there's a Luigi the Bunny. So, Luigi the Bunny with a cult following. <laughs> and I did a little research before putting the segment together. And Steve, I don't know if you're aware of this, but 
Luigi the Bunny has 1,498 more Facebook friends than you do. <laughs> Luigi the Bunny. Yeah. Well, you know how they multiply anyway, so what do you that's expect? Right. He would only have more friends, but yeah. That's right. That's, that's easy to believe. Anyway, we're going to do a quick couple of plugs. Casino Night for the Macho Foundation, my late great buddy Scott Epstein's charity. Check out the themachofoundation.org themachofoundation.org and this is this week August 11 7 to 11 p.m. and uh, themachofoundation.org it's at the Coral House in Baldwin Long Island worthwhile charity they send kids to camp Scott Epstein uh, wrestling uh, manager wrestling uh, agent photographer late great friend of ours and uh, please support this great and, yeah, great, great man, great man and um, shout out to his widow Ash and, and his family, of course. And Thursday, August 20, Robert Ross appearing at Thai Rock, T-H-A-I, beautiful restaurant in the Rockaways, 375 Beach 92nd Street, Rockaway Beach, Queens, and yours truly will be hosting this great blues end of the summer bash. And we're going to have some interesting people down there as well, plenty of surprises. Full band, Robert Ross. And um, Steve, plug your radio shows. Oh, thank you. Uh, just everyone go to planetludwig.com. My um, Beatles Hour with Steve Ludwig is archived on there. Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture. And there are also videos and like just a lot of fun things. I hope fun things. Not, not as not Luigi the Bunny, but you'll not see. Not quite as good as Luigi not, the Bunny. Well, never. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going right. to make it that high. But. On planetludwig.com, there's a lot more than just the two shows. It's just a lot of fun things. And uh, thank you very much, planetludwig.com. And, you know, why don't you plug your book here? Apartment 4B, like in Brooklyn, about the turbulent East Flatbush of the 60s and 70s. And, Steve, tell us about CU and CCU. Well, in 06, I had open heart surgery. They And you died. And I died. That's right. But I, I came back just to write the book. That's they right. saw it open my rib cage, pulled it apart, and I wrote a book about it. And... Um, that's available at planetloving.com. And you'll notice sandwiched in the middle, is that right? Between our two books is our guest Sage's CD. We'll be talking about that later on as well. That's right. We're going to meet Sage later in the show and a music performance. And when we come back, we're going to talk indie wrestling. We're going to talk WWE. We're going to talk wrestling in general with VSK and Mr. Martinez. So don't you dare go anywhere, folks. This is the eclectic mix known as Legends TV. We'll be right back. My name is Dr. Robert Brevar. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. 
located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000, or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. was the associate producer on the movie The Wrestler, so we're going to talk some wrestling in this segment. We are joined by VSK and Mr. Martinez. How are yes. you guys today? All right. Good, good, good. 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 And Mr. Martinez, you have like a 27-word lead-in to your name. Why don't you give it? Because I'll never remember it all. Um, my real name is uh, Elliot Martinez. Uh, the wrestling persona is uh, Mr. Martinez. I'm the brand ambassador of the group Federated. Um, it's uh you could say I, I consider it a brand because I don't think we're just a, a stable uh, it's a standalone promotion and uh, we run with other promotions within other promotions in the uh, East Coast area I think that's a great idea because usually indie promotions they're, they're killing each other like why not work together share talent instead of slashing tires and ripping down posters I mean exactly you know I, exactly. I think so. You guys, uh, you guys work in different promotions, and today you're representing Tier One. Tell us a little about Tier One. Uh, Tier One um, just had their their debut show in July, uh, July 10th, um, and VSK was the winner of the inaugural match, which was a, a six man fray, um, and he uh, beat out uh, five other opponents to become the first. Uh, uh, Six man Freya. Uh, I, I like that, that word promotion. Frey. That's old school. That's like something like yeah. Gordon Soli would say. <laughs> yeah. Frey. Yeah. I like that. It's not used enough anymore. That's though. right. WWE never uses the word Frey. No. No, they don't. So, VSK, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, uh, I've been wrestling now for about eight years. And, eight years. Uh, okay. Eight years. Uh, yeah. Trying to get around as much as I can. Uh, I'm excited about Tier 1. You know, we'll talk about Tier 1 since I'm here to talk about Tier 1. But uh, it's. You know, an exciting new place because it's a mix of a bunch of different company guys from different companies, uh, guys you may have heard of, guys you haven't heard of, and all coming together for one uh, new exciting uh, venture. So hopefully we'll see where that goes, and hopefully uh, some big things are ahead. I know Luke Cox came in. Yes. He's very impressive. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. And okay, I'm going to put you guys on the spot and just be honest. I am a jaded old school fan. I have seen the best of the best literally around the world. And uh, convince me, what would make me on a Friday or Saturday night go to Tier 1? I um, hype it. They serve alcohol. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> well, they do that at the Elks Lodge also, right. 42 other promotions. But I'm there. That's right. Um, very similar to you. I'm, I'm old school, and the whole reason behind Federated uh, being a promotion with one word, one letter, was uh, was a huge fan uh, growing up of obviously the WWF. And when uh, they lost their lawsuit with the World Wildlife Foundation and they right. did their- Speaking of animals. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of animals. Speaking of animals, I think uh, the bunny had something to do with that. Um, <laughs> but you know, they did the whole campaign where it was get the F out. So from there, you know, me being a fan, I said, you know what, then I'm going to take the F and that's what's going to you know, be our flag, and that's what launched Federated. This was a good number of years ago. We started in uh, 2011. Um, we've done shows with like 2KW Pro, House of Glory, um, FSW, um, PWS, and now Tier 1. Um, and 
like you said, with tier one, it's just it's exactly what we want it to be a part of, which is a group of wrestlers from surrounding areas, you know, all over the United States being brought in to just put together a good card from start to finish. I mean, the July 10th show was amazing from the pre-show all the way to the main event with Luke Cox becoming, excuse me, becoming the uh, first tier one champ. Um, and you know, the next show in October, uh, October 2nd, again in Queens, New York. Um, it's a Friday night, eight o'clock bell time. Um, you know, that's gonna be another great- and what's the venue? Great show, RS Studio. It's a new venue on Atlantic Avenue. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think it's great to bring in talent from all over because one of the problems with indies is you, you start seeing the same guys endlessly and it, it, it's almost like watching a repeat. Absolutely, and uh, you know, to your point, what, what brings you in, there's uh, so many different styles, uh, like I said before, people you know, people maybe you haven't seen before, and nobody's handcuffed. Everyone can go out there and do what they're good at. It's not like, you know, these are WWE style matches, these are ROH style matches. You're going to see an array of all different things. I saw a 400 ma uh, pound man, Falaba, get uh, suplexed for the first time mm -hmm. in his career. And yeah. I was pretty taken back by that. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that you maybe have never seen before at, at a Tier 1 show. Okay, okay. So, instead of just talking about it, why don't we show this video clip and get a real feel? And, and both of you gentlemen are involved with this. So, okay. um, we're going to go to the video, some action from Tier 1. Enjoy. What a travesty. What a travesty. Someone just got up on the apron through the caveman off. I have no idea what's going on right now. Mr. Martinez is pacing around ringside. PSK. With the Ghostbuster to the knee. And the caveman's done. Timekeeper right on the money there. Let the people in Queens know that VSK is the victor. Mr. Martinez of Federate is getting in the ring right now. I guess VSK is with him. Hands him the shirt of the Federation. What is this going to mean for Tier 1 Wrestling going forward, Larry Dallas? I have no idea, but wherever Mr. Martinez is involved, you know bad things are coming. Clearly the man behind his, the man at ringside to your right, playing an integral part in this match. I don't like that he's staring at us, Larry Dallas. I don't like that he's staring at us either. But your winner of the six-way, VSK, VSK going out on his on his shoulders, holding up the federated shirt. Carried out like. All right, and we are back. Nice. And we were saying during the break, the caveman has a very good uh, gimmick persona. Even even during intermission, he's in character and yes, he's he interacting with the kids. And uh, I, I like him. It, it's it's the old school kayfabe. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he, he's which I just blew. Yeah, <laughs> yes. perfect. He, he, yes, sti he, he sticks to it, but you know, that's the kids love him. Uh, that's what's making him a fan favorite. But since yeah. you since you mentioned the old school kayfabe, um, whenever I watch WWE.com and they break kayfabe very clearly, I mean, how, how do you react to that? I mean, with the internet, you know, nowadays, I mean, everybody knows it's predetermined. It's scripted. What? You, the, 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 Nobody told the, Steve. What the <laughs> heck is going on? Um, I mean, fans are smart. You know, it, it's it's like watching a movie. It's escaping from reality for a little while and and just having fun watching. You know, this fantasy world. Well, there's pluses out. and minuses to everything. A, a plus side is you don't have to worry about some lunatic stabbing you. Exactly. You know, Piper, <laughs> exactly. Piper was stabbed. Moolah was stabbed. Blackjack Mulligan was stabbed. Blassie had acid thrown in his face. Exactly. I, I mean, you know, at least the fans are smart enough, not, you know, not to go on a rampage. Do you, you know the Samoans were discovered like that? Do you, did you ever hear this story? Um, Pat Patterson was a heel in San Francisco, and he was beating up uh, Chief Peter Maivia in the match. 
And, and the Samoans, Afrin Sika, they ran out of the crowd, or one of them ran out of the crowd to jump in the ring. So they smartened them up. They said, you're big guys, we'll turn you into wrestlers. Wow. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that stuff today. Yeah, I, I want to ask uh, VSK, it, is it, it must be cool to get into character in the ring. Do you, oh, it, definitely. It's, it's definitely. gotta be a blast, But right? it's, not, it's not just, you know, in the ring. I've, it, it takes a little bit more, it, which might sound weird, but like you have to kind of get into it uh, once you're in the building, because now you got to think of all these different things that you know you wouldn't think about day to day. Like, how will the fans react to this? You know, if I it, right now uh, mainly I am not a fan favorite, so I'm mm -hmm. going around and I'm thinking, how would people react to this if I do this? What? Are so it's like an all day process uh, mm -hmm. of how can I annoy everyone today? Yeah. And yeah. luckily, I've been pretty good at it. <laughs> I've been really annoying. So you're, you're totally on stage from the minute you, even before you get in that building. Yeah, because, right? you know, a lot of places now, um, they let some fans in early or they'll do autograph signings and things like that. So it's, it's more than just the match, you know. You have to have yeah. your, your character throughout the whole day because mm -hmm. really, when you're doing this on this level, you're selling yourself, you know. Yeah, right. you, so, you have to get them invested in the character that you, you've created. Mm -hmm. uh, it, whether it's you're trying to sell pictures or t-shirts or just get them to enjoy your match on a different level, you really have to be selling yourself the whole time. Yeah. Is there any line you wouldn't cross? Like, I've seen heels rip up a little kid's picture or whatever. Uh, funny story, I, I had a match last weekend uh, and I stole a kid's shoe. Yeah. yeah, and then he got pretty upset, so I yeah. threw it back at him. Okay, so I mean, no, <laughs> there is no line I will not okay. cross. I mean, I mean, you, you know, when you're out there, you're in character. I mean, perfect example is uh, my family usually comes to the show, and there's been a couple of times where either my youngest daughter JC is in the audience. Uh, screaming poppy for me to look at her and I, like, yeah. I, and I completely ignore yeah. her. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, our, our uh, pre-show TV taping that we did with PWS, my son was in the aisle way when we came out and uh, he put his hand out for me to high five him and I completely blew him off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Afterwards he was like, wow, you, you know, you really I think, did that to me? I think you kind of have to, you know, like you said, everyone knows now. It's not a secret. So you have to go that extra step to get that emotion from people. Yeah. So if, it, if that means taking a little kid's shoe or ignoring your son, <laughs> that's what you got to do. Yeah. I, I remember that one match when VSK strangled a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he got real heat for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So speaking of heat, as, as a manager, you know, we used to call it cheap heat if somebody would curse or... You know, everything's so politically correct today. Is there is there something that may be taboo? Because I, I know in many indie shows, like they'll find the fattest guy in the audience and pick on him. You know, and even that today they call it fat shaming. So mm -hmm. is is there something that's so politically incorrect that you wouldn't do it, or is everything? Of, um, know? I mean, the Mr. Martinez character. Um, Really, didn't, really doesn't speak much. Okay. You know, this character, it's kind of the, you know, the, the, the guy in the black suit, you know, the power behind the muscle. Um, you know, I, I pretty much, you know, is more business savvy and, and, and I come out and, you know, use the finances of Federated right. and the muscle of Federated to basically achieve, you know, what we want. Yeah, and that's, that's where I get the heat. They don't like the fact that I can outsmart you know the promotion or you know I, I have a wrestler that can outdo one of the home talent so okay. that's you know that's where they they tend not to like me but in the end you know i, I never said i was a uh, i was a heel it's more about just you know being the best of the best and that's okay. what we are so is there anything you might not say an ethnic slur or... oh hey, yeah i'm not trying <laughs> i'm not trying to like you know cross any lines here i'm just doing what I think will get the most, get the biggest reaction. You know, a lot of the shows nowadays are are kids um, and parents, so it's easy to to pick on some kids. You know, like tier one, we have a, a bit of a bigger array of people. Maybe get some more uh, adults uh, or you know teenage fans. So then you're a little more lenient uh, with what you can and cannot say. But uh, you know. I'm not trying to be Hulk Hogan, <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do to get you know to get some attention and get some heat on yourself. And who are some of the wrestlers that have influenced you? Oh, uh, 
uh, number one for me is Shawn Michaels. Uh, since day one, he's just my all-time favorite. I think he's got the total package. Uh, if you watch back my early years of professional wrestling, I had a ponytail down to the middle of my oh, yeah. back, and I was doing all of his moves, and I found out that there already was a Shawn Michaels, and I couldn't be the second one, right, so right. I started changing it up. Uh, but yeah, Shawn Michaels is number one, but uh, when I was a kid, I first started watching because of Hulk Hogan. My dad was a fan. He went to WrestleMania 2 and then uh, brought home the program for that, and he had a Hulk Hogan action figure, and that was it for me. I was hooked. Anybody else? Uh, oh, yeah. Abs I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, I couldn't believe uh, Rob Van Dam when I first saw him, how athletic he yeah, was and how yeah. strong he is. Uh, and things. original. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And like again, I stole a bunch of his stuff when I first okay. started. Uh, Steal from the best. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. AJ Styles is another guy and who Styles right now is, is making great. waves. But I've been, you know, 10, 15 years I've been watching him stealing his stuff. So <laughs> if you watch I mean, me... You're offering an, an homage to him. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. If you watch me, I'm not, I'm not any one particular person because I've taken so much from other people. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what you have to do to invent yourself. you got to take... Sure. You know, all these influences from all these places and make it your own. And since you mentioned AJ, I think it's phenomenal that guys like AJ. It's a good pun. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and the Young Bucks. That was a Freudian slip, but. And the Young Bucks and guys like that do not need to go to the WWE. They can make a living with uh, ROH and New Japan and all the top indies and, you know, do very, very well, have more free time, more time to be with their families. And, and make a damn good living. What's your take on that? I, uh, I actually just finished up this past October um, with a two-year-long feud with the Young Bucks. In How Fel great are those guys? They are unbelievable. And the great thing, like I was saying before about selling yourself, the amazing thing about them, as soon as they get to the building, they set up their table, they have 30 different t-shirts, yeah. 30 different pictures, and there's a line to see them the entire time. It is unbelievable. The amount of... I can't believe how much money they have to be making just on t-shirts alone, but they have such a, a following. They are really breaking the mold of uh, how to be successful in professional wrestling, and a guy like AJ Styles, who uh, did you know TNA for so long, wasn't happy anymore. Now his career has blown up since then. He's doing bigger and better things since then. It's really it's changing the way success is looked at in professional wrestling, making it possible for people like me on this level to be you know, making money and be successful. I'm glad we touched on this because what I see borders on self-defeating and stupidity when indie <laughs> wrestlers tell each other, oh, th this guy this guy promotes himself too much. He hypes himself <laughs> too much. I mean, I mean, no such thing. I mean, it's no ridiculous. You know, th it's a business. Exactly. Show business. Sports entertainment business. So if the Young Bucks can make a living to the point where they say no to WWE, I think that's phenomenal. Absolutely. I, I think it's really, mm -hmm. you know, where you're in control. You're the captain of your ship. So if you go down to the, uh, to the Elks Lodge or wherever else it may be, and you have 40 things on your table and you're making money, more power to you. That's, exactly. that's not shameless self-promotion. Yeah. That's common sense. That's it, business. It would make it's a sense. business. I'm sorry. It, it's a bit. No, it's a business at the end of the day. That, that's exactly. But what a lot of indie wrestlers are clueless. Clueless. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, the era that we're in right now, it's it's the age of the indies, really. And you have you know the WWE that's out there. Um, great that ROH just got its TV deal. Um, TNA's holding on for as, as long as it can. Still alive, yes. <laughs> yeah. But if you really look at like the news that's coming out from indie shows and 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 the noise that that they're making like again it, it, it all goes back to the the smart fans like they you know they want to see good wrestling and it's out there when we did the wrestler this is this is almost comical i did six casting calls i brought in about 150 different wrestlers including necro butcher which is an incredible scene oh, incredible um several indie wrestlers no showed their, their screen test with Aronofsky because they had a $25 indie booking, okay? I mean, wow. think about it. Think about it. You have a world-class director you're going to read for, and they no-showed, okay? So, you know, the mentality sometimes, it's, it's almost ridiculous. It's like kids, you know, where, where you're treating it as a business, as a livelihood, and you have to respect that, you know? Talking about the wrestler, you actually had a... Uh... Federated original. Who wrestling. may that be? 
The Greek god Papadon. Oh yeah, Papadon. I know him forever. He, he should be in WWE or New Japan or whatever. He's tremendous. Yeah. Absolutely tremendous. I hope he's not listening to this because his head will just get bigger. <laughs> if he hears people saying I've that. invited him on this show 37 times. I'm not inviting him again. <laughs> Consider it an open yeah. invite. Come down when you can. I'm not asking again. But uh, no, seriously, he, he's a tremendous athlete. He looks the part. Sometimes, sometimes I'll be at an indie show and I think it's a kid. I think it's a fan and it's a wrestler. You know, the guy's 17, he's 140 pounds and you know, he doesn't even look like a wrestler. Like you were saying before about it, it being a business, you gotta present yourself in a way that you know, people can see you as a, su you know, a superstar, someone larger than life. Uh, I am not the biggest person by any means, but you know, I'm spending you know, hours a day at the gym and, and working on myself and a lot of people don't, don't do that for whatever reason. You know, I still train, like I said, I've been doing this eight years, I still train uh, one or two times a week uh, down at Creative Pro in Hicksville. Uh, I'm at the gym four days a week. You know, this takes a lot of time and effort, not just physically, I'm, thinking, I'm watching matches, I'm trying to learn new stuff, trying to figure out how to you know, advance my character. For the last uh, two weeks, I've been trying to design new T-shirts and new gear for myself. Awesome. You know, you got to really put a lot of time and effort into this, and it's very draining at times. But the reward to be standing in the ring and look like you belong there, you know, that is, uh, it, it's very rewarding. Absolutely, and I find that a lot of the wrestlers today, it, it, it it's they're just spot fest, no psychology. You know, you're two minutes into the match, they've done 17 spots, they miss one, the one guy stands there like a deer in the headlights. You know, it's a craft, it's an art. It's storytelling. They, yeah. they interviewed yeah. Nakamura yesterday on uh, New Japan uh, TV, and um, he actually used the word, you know, art. This is my art. And uh, when it's done right, wrestling is an incredible art form. And people that don't understand that, you know, maybe they're watching bad WWE comedy and they're not seeing, you know, what a Nakamura does, um, what an Austin Aries, Cesaro, you know, whoever, you know, Homicide we mentioned with, in, yeah. in the green room, low key. I mean, these, these guys are world class athletes by any stretch of the imagination. But That's also true. great storytellers, you know, from their promo, from what they're doing in ring, you know, just walking to the ring. You know, coming through the entranceway, they, they're they're telling a story. You know, they're, they're putting on a show for you. You know, guys get lost in how many spots they can hit, or yeah. you know what they saw in, a, in a, on television and trying to recreate. But also, it, it loses credibility because when it's like thirty-seven finishes, <laughs> nothing finishes. You know, it's it's kind of like, all right, it, it it it's it's like a Roadrunner cartoon after a while. You know, there has to be some. When you watch uh, like Nakamura in a championship match in Japan, Okada, guys like this, mm -hmm. it, it's like you just go, it feels like a sport. It feels like a championship. It feels like it means something. And the thing is, is when you look at those matches, they still hit those big spots. Oh, yeah, they, absolutely. It's just it's the way the story is being told. Absolutely. Way. You know, Roddy Piper died last week, and I was telling people, some of the best nights of my life was seeing heel Roddy Pipe, main event of God in mid 80s. You know, I, I mean, I've seen James Brown, I've seen the greatest performers on earth, you know, concerts, theater, you know, I've been to hundreds of Broadway shows. And I put Roddy Pipe right up there with these, you know, legends in all genres of entertainment. And the Garden verified this the other night, validated it, I should say. Mm -hmm. They had his picture up yep. yes. outside the garden as one of the greatest performers that were ever there. Very I'm, nice I'm, tribute. I'm not sure I've ever seen that for you know, pro wrestling with them Probably outside not. the garden. Maybe, a, maybe they do it for Bruno when he goes. Yeah, but I mean, you know. up until now, I don't, I don't remember ever seeing that done at the garden. So yeah, yeah I don't think so. I don't he, think so. Yeah. But Piper... He was on 8, 10, 12 minutes. It was like a tornado hit the place. <laughs> yep. You were exhausted. You would, you know, it was... It was Talk about someone who can get, you know, a range of emotions from people. He could have you cheering for him or throwing stuff into the ring. He whatever. was a better heel, but oh, he, yeah, you know, yeah. he, was, he was great as a face oh, also. Well, you know, whatever he needed to get from you that night, he can oh, get yeah. it without a problem, yeah. you know? Yeah, R.I.P., Roddy Piper. Wow, yep. wow. So anyway, guys, plug any upcoming shows, any websites, social media... Me? 
Yeah. 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 Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the VSK wrestling page. Uh, find me on Instagram, is that VSK, and on Twitter at VSKing98. Uh, I know we got a show in Creative Pro in Hicksville, uh, Kurt Hawkins' current school. He's yeah. excellent. He is. I've seen him on many in the yeah. uh, Tell him to come on one day. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, he's got a show August 30th uh, down in Hicksville. Um, you can find all that information on my Facebook and my Instagram and Twitter. And then Tier 1 is back uh, October, October 2nd, 2nd, right? Uh, back in Jamaica, Queens. Okay. And what's the website for Tier 1? Uh, TierOneWrestling.org. Okay. And shout uh, out to Dennis, the promoter. Yes, yes absolutely. Uh, thank you to thank Dennis you. for getting us on here, hooking us up go. with this. Yeah, good guy. And and any social media you'd like to plug? Um, Facebook, uh, Federated Wrestling. Um, Instagram, Federated underscore Wrestling. Um, follow us on Twitter. Um, and yeah, I mean, upcoming shows. Uh, 2KW Pro is putting together a show in October also, it looks like. Um, and then back to Tier 1 Wrestling October uh, 2nd. And uh, we already got one win under our belt, so uh, round two. Steve? I just have a quick question for Mr. Martinez. When I go to the Tier1.com website, is it dot on the number? Dot org. Dot org. I'm sorry. Is it the number one? It's the number. It's the Tier, the number one, dot wrestling, org. dot org. Okay. Okay. Um, any managers that have influenced you? I grew up on Albano and Blassie and the Grand Wizard. And Cornette was always great. Um, I mean, growing up, I, 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 as a kid, I was a huge uh, Ric Flair fan. Uh -huh. um, you know, he wasn't as big as all the other guys. You know, when, if you saw him, you know, before the bell rang, standing across the ring from, let's say, a Hogan, you know, or, or anybody that was much bigger than him, you would expect for him to lose. But some way, at the end of the the match, he figured out how to win. We used to travel to Philly every month to see Flair defend the NWA belt. Unbelievable. In yeah, his I mean, prime that's, in the 80s. yeah, that's that. You yeah. know, and it, and it made the belt mean something. That's something that you know, right now, you have a couple of you know, Japan does a really good job with that. You know, where belts are you know defended. In and their promotion, something. and that's it. And you know, you're dropping the belt this month. Somebody else has it next month. You know, they hold on to it. I mean, there's no title reigns anymore. Um, you know, so back then when he was traveling with the title and he held it for so long, defending it in this promotion, defending it in this territory, it made the belt mean something. Right? Yeah. And um, so yeah, I would say my influence, not you know, manager-wise, was more Ric Flair just for a great the, talker yeah great talker yeah. you know the personality outside of the ring i mean you talk, you talk about cutting a promo um better than anyone out there and i'm gonna just, tell you somebody that history sort of lost john the maniac tolis out of he, he was huge in la he was in the first closed circuit before pay-per-view yep. it was tolis against blassie this was before wrestlemania this guy was a normal sized guy one of the greatest talkers one of the greatest heels ever and unfortunately, the geniuses that were doing the uh, Olympic Auditorium LA tapings, they would tape over it every week to save the tape. So, <laughs> so the tapings don't exist anymore. Oh, but um, John Tolis, one of the great talkers ever. Flair, of course. Piper, Dusty. Wow. Dusty, we just lost. A lot of our heroes are going, Steve. Yeah, well, you're still here for me, so. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And on that note, we want to thank VSK and Mr. Martinez for thank appearing you, on Legends yeah. TV. Yeah. All right, all right. We will be right back. We're going to shift to music with Sage. Don't you dare go anywhere. We'll be right back. Galaxy Luxury Coach is a full-service limousine and party bus company. Family-owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best-in-class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all-day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. 
For corporate and more laid back events, we will cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience begin. Hi, I'm Tatiana, and I'm a person in long-term recovery from heroin addiction. It was really, really hard, waking up in the morning, not knowing what to do, needing my next bag. I was so lost, but I'm here today to tell you that there is a solution. When I was in my active addiction, I didn't realize that there was another way of life. I thought that that was the only way, because it felt so good to get high, but it was all an illusion, and I didn't realize that. But today, being four years clean and sober, my life is absolutely amazing. I'm able to travel. I don't need a drink. I don't need a drug. I'm just happy being with myself. I couldn't understand for many years why. Why was I doing this? It's because I was an addict, but I didn't know it. Today, many kids are becoming addicted to drugs and alcohol, but they don't know exactly what they're getting into until they're out of it. And it's our job, it's my job, to stand for these kids, stand for their recovery, and fight for their addiction. So I'm the president of Onward Forever, and I provide recovery services and support. And we're here to help. We're here to just listen. Anything that we can do to help. If you need me, this is how you get a hold of me. Please call 347-244-1550. 347-244-1550. I developed this company to help you, our families, and our community to fight this crisis on Long Island and in our nation. Thank you. Vicky for um, directing and I want to acknowledge uh, the passing of Vicky's mom um, our deepest sincerest condolences uh, it's not easy when we become the parents and Steve just lost his dad and yeah. my mom's been struggling so you talk to anybody 
in our general age range, and it's mm. tough. It's tough. Yeah, I hope to find my dad soon. He, yeah. he, I lost him. He's wandered somewhere. Yeah. But don't both. <laughs> Seriously, both. My, my father has to kid around. Steve, so. Steve, I'm going to hell anyway. What's Steve the wrote a, a funny book about an open heart surgery. That's his sense of humor. <laughs> anyway, we are joined by Sage and Steve. Handle the introduction. Oh, well, they, they've been on my show, my radio show, Maria Pinello, Phil Carollo, and uh, together they're known as Sage. And. Um, they have one of the greatest blending of sounds uh, that I've heard in a long, long time. Why don't, uh, I don't know who the spokesperson wants to be, but how'd you guys, how'd you guys start out? Um, we have a mutual friend, Kathy Shepard. She must hear her name 50 yes, times a week, yes. right? Um, and uh, she, had, she had been in a band with Phil. I went to high school with her. And North Bergen High School. Yes. Pride of North Bergen is another <laughs> North Bergen. Yes. Um, <laughs> and she, she and Phil were talking one night, and he had mentioned that he was looking for a female singer. And she, a little light bulb went off in her head, and she said, "I think I know a female singer for you." She contacted me, gave each other the information, and five years later. Here we mm -hmm. are. Right, five years. It's, it's five, five years. years. Yeah, five years. Though. That's longer than some marriages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've just hit the five-year mark, haven't That's you? That's right, five okay. years. Don't, five don't, long, you know, long years. No, it's, because, <laughs> it's because we're not married. Yeah. Right. That's why Quite, it works. Yeah. You know, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I have platonic friends for decades, and sometimes it's better than... You know, romantic. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I've been happily married for 21 years. Married for 35, happily for 21. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's Henry, Henry Youngman. Okay. Uh, love you, Sue. Yeah, is, your wife, is your wife uh, watching here? Uh, oh, she'll see it on the archives, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Um, when, when Maria and Phil were on my radio show, we were talking about the delicate balance that, um, especially on your new CD, uh, you have original songs on it, which yes. are wonderful, by the way. Thank you. Um, but when you're performing live, it's that delicate balance that, you know, people in the audience pretty much want to hear songs that they know. How are you guys with that? Are you okay with performing mostly covers and just throwing in an original here and there? Yeah. He's letting me talk. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, but you go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good with that. I think more than anything else, this is how I feel. We're a cover band mm -hmm. that have some original songs. Yeah. We're not an original band that, have, that do some covers. Mm. That's how we started. We started as a cover band completely. I enjoy doing other people's songs. Yeah. So much as people like to hear it, I like to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, you put your own. We put our spin own spin on, on things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not the straight off original. That, that's very important because if you take a masterpiece like Marvin Gaye's "What's Going On," uh -huh. you're not going to top it. So right. put your own spin on it. Right. Absolutely. Do it, do exactly. it the way if, you, if you can't do it exactly like the original artist, then you better change it and make it sure. your own. Make it your own. Great example yeah. of that on the, on the new CD is um, a Phil and Maria cover Over the Rainbow. Now, I mean, hmm. how are you going to touch that? But it, it's kind of a, in a faster tempo, and then you go into the more class, and it's really a beautiful blend, but that's, that's a perfect example of what they were talking mm -hmm. about. Nice. Now, um, Vicki Mealy, and Maria Pinello actually have something very much in common. They're both Rocky Horror Picture Show, well, Rocky Horror Picture Show, yeah. Rocky Horror Show. Freaks. I mean, Maria, you freaks. Yeah, yeah, they're freaks. <laughs> I think without the Rocky Horror film. <laughs> but I mean, why don't you t tell? There are so many Rocky Horror fans out there. Tell how that whole thing oh, came boy. about. A whole thing, huh? Well, well you know what the, the abbreviation. Back in version. 1979. I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show for the first time in a movie theater that didn't have a floor show or right. anything like that. I absolutely fell in love with this movie. The very next weekend, I went again with my friends to a different theater that did have the whole throwing the rice and stuff. And I didn't stop going for seven years. <laughs> I started performing there, um, playing Columbia. And we had a little bit of a show offshoot, if you will, called Fantasy Free Me that was a live, uh, what, what did they call it? A review. Mm -hmm. And that, that didn't go too far, but it was, it yeah. was fun to mm -hmm. do. And in about 1985, 86, I said, uh, I'm done. 
and then that was that. So. I, I think we have a picture. I think we have a picture of Maria oh. as Columbia. Oh, right, yeah. Thank you. There you are. <laughs> yeah. Now, what year you think that was? I would say that that was 84, 85, mm -hmm. somewhere around. And you met the actress who plays who plays yeah many the times actually. Many how, times. how was that meet? Was uh, I, I'm always afraid to meet my people I really like, Evan. And you know how was she? She was uh, wonderful. What's her name uh, again? Little else? Nell. Right, yeah. uh, and and the actress. Well, right. Little Nell is the actress. That's what I that's what I mean. Yeah. Little Nell. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nell Campbell. She, she yes, at right. one Nell, time right. Nell owned Nell's in in mm -hmm. the city. Uh, lovely, lovely woman. Mm -hmm. I, I've met a lot of the. The stars from the movie. Now, a lot of people don't know there was a sequel, Shock Treatment. Didn't do quite as well. No, they they really did try to push it a little bit with the um, with a floor show and the whole thing. Um, it has its own very small cult following, right. but I, I shouldn't. I'm going to not go any further. It's, it's like when they tried to do Fans with the Opera. They did that sequel, the movie. I don't know if even if people were even aware of it, but. Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber there, there's, I forget what it's called, too, but it was just, it wasn't good. You're still going to reunions, right? Yeah, I, I still go to reunions. And it's one coming up. Uh, that's actually a 40th anniversary. Rocky Horror has been around for 40 years. What do you think Rocky Horror represents, uh, if you had to explain to somebody who hasn't seen it, or... Uh, I mean, it is a cultural well, phenomenon. It is, it is. Uh, what it represents... What's the meaning of the movie? Uh, <laughs> To be yourself, okay. and and not to fair. let anything stop you from that. That's fair enough. Um, That's sage. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> nice segue. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. It is a good segue because, you know, uh, as indie artists, uh, I know Marie, you you run your your household, and Phil, uh, you know, you were working during the day. It's got to be tough to perform at night, coming home from a tough day at work. Uh, well, most what of my day, like? most, most of my day work is Sage. Okay. It's making phone calls and marketing and trying to get gigs, and mm -hmm. so it's pretty much um, all day affair, and then playing at night. Now I know when you see D two, you have a backing band, or do you do most of the instruments? Yes, or? I did most of the instruments. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Because I know when we hear the live set today, Maria is going to be singing live, and we ha you have your the backing track right. with the with the instruments. Correct. How long would it take, like this album, to make? Yeah, how long would that would that take you? Hours. Uh, God, it's it's hard to put a number on it. It really yeah. is hard to put mm -hmm. a number on. It. You lose track after a while. What it would take, but few, you know, probably about three to six months. Yeah. Wow. And how many how many CDs do you have? We have with this one we have four. Yeah. Right, and three of them are live CDs. Um, because I record most of the shows that we do, and I create CDs from the live shows. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I act like I don't know the answer because I own all your you CDs, the, and they're, they're you so did. fantastic. But <laughs> what, what type of music do you prefer to do? That's hard to say, too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you can't... We like to do, both of us like, I mean, many different varieties of yeah. music. Jazz, funk, rock. I think we stick with classic pop. Mm -hmm. I, I would yeah. say that that uh, Chicago... Well, most of what the people like to hear. Yeah. And yeah. we like to play also. Mm -hmm. We do, sh like Marie says, Chicago. Um, uh, Chicago Steely, Steely Dan, Dan, Beatles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Better get the Beatles in there. Yes. Absolutely. We do uh, a lot of Beatles. I, I tell this story when we play every time, too. Um, we do Beatle medleys because there's too many good songs. Right. We would, we would, all we would do is the Beatles all night. Mm -hmm. So we, we take three or four songs, put them together, and and that way you could get a couple of good ones in there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we could we could do that all night with with the amount of Beatles songs that we have. We don't, yeah. <laughs> but we could. Um, so what's you, your favorite Beatles song? I can't yeah, do that. Again, this. <laughs> you stay? Eight days a week. That's I your favorite. That <laughs> well, I, I remember, remember that. that. Yep. Penny Lane. I love yeah, Penny yeah, Lane. Yeah, that's a beautiful song. We don't do that's one we don't Blackbird's do. Blackbird's great. Mm -hmm. We do Blackbird. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do. You know, I wanted to mention, uh, well, when the audience hears, hears Phil and Marie in a few minutes, um, they were on my radio show, and we did an entire CD listening party. Wow. So they'll get a nice 
they can hear all the songs. We really kind of dissect the talk, the songs. So if, a little shameless plug here, but on planetludwig.com, it's archived show number 83. Show number 83, we go through the entire CD. And wow. It was really a good time. And I'd like yeah. to mention also that you can pick up the CD on our website, and the website is musicbysage.com, uh, and you can purchase the, lot, the uh, Second Chance CD or any one of the live CDs mm -hmm. that we have. You guys are also on Facebook. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash musicbysage. Any upcoming gigs you'd like to plug? Well, no. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, tomorrow, if you're in the New Jersey area in Lake uh, Hapakong, we're at the Jefferson House. Uh, this is our fifth fifth year there? Fourth year. Fourth, fourth year fourth at the year. Jefferson House, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, beautiful outdoor gig right on the lake, tiki bar, decent food in the place. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice day. And it's going to be beautiful tomorrow. Yeah. I, I, I laughed because I just made a joke before about Hot yeah. Not knowing like, that you guys I heard that yeah. before. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not laughing at what you're playing. I'm yeah. saying, wow, what a coincidence that is. Yeah. Um, before we wrap it up and let you perform, any career highlights come to mind? Any any particular shows you're proud of? Any All great of moments? <laughs> All of them. Mm -hmm. If we want to talk about Rocky Horror, the 10th anniversary, which was 30 years ago. Um, was the highlight of my career because I got to sing with Meatloaf. Wow, okay. I, I got to perform with Little Nell and Pe Patricia Quinn, Magenta. Uh, Richard O'Brien was there. I sang wow. with him. I hope somebody filmed it. Uh, it's, it is filmed. Good, 20th good. Century Fox actually filmed it. Good. But we don't get, we, I haven't seen it. Because a, a lot of times <laughs> you have some great event and nobody thinks to film it. Mm -hmm. And it's lost. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it too bad? Uh, not too bad. Thank goodness he's still alive. But the shape Tim Curry is in right now. Oh, I'm so sad. Yeah, yeah. I heard he's doing much better. Oh, good. That's so, good news. Yes. Yeah. Right. How about you, Phil? Career highlights. Um, side, career highlights. Side your grandchild. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's a trip. He's a trip. Um, sage, I would say. Yeah. Just the whole. Yeah. And, and it's how do you feel like when you're when you're in a club? Can you kind of tell? Like, oh, you couldn't wait to do the song, and uh-oh, this one's not working. Does oh, that ever happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. And you happens. just cross it off your set list? Yeah. No. Or? We'll no, try no, another we try time. Say, right. Screw them. I'm going to try it again until it works. Sometimes yeah. it's the crowd, or, you yeah. know, yeah. or maybe we just started doing it, and we don't like the arrangement we did, and we'll change mm -hmm. it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, uh, or later on in the night, when they've had a few more drinks, and they're try really it again. Yeah, they're right. really nice. And, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. you know <laughs> absolutely. But we get good reaction with the Steely Dan stuff. Most people will say, wow. I've never heard bands play especially yeah. especially duos. Right, right, yeah. Right. yeah. But you know, we talk we talk about the cover songs, but I do have to say, Phil is really a wonderful songwriter. The the new songs on the Second Coming, uh, Second Second Coming. Chance, Second Chance. Second Chance. You did that. I, mean, I, 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 know, I did that on the radio show as <laughs> yeah. well. It's like a mental block. Yeah. But Phil has some really really great original lyrics on on, Thanks, on this Steve. new CD. Thank yeah. you. There you go, and we're gonna hear this tremendous band Sage right after this very brief timeout. We're looking forward to it. Don't go anywhere, folks.
you looking for? You don't even know that. You don't even know. You're on the board, so you can't even answer. I'm asking you about it. You're going to be highly skilled. You're going to be highly skilled. You understand that? Are you sick? Are you well versed there? Are you very smart man? Hit me with some funny shit. My shit is twisted. Tell me something. Tell me what something. What do you have right there? That's awesome. Well, that's a big. That's nice. You know damn well. You know damn well. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Sir. Hey, are you interested in twisting that? 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 Twisting we are twisted. We are awesome. We are awesome. We are awesome. Can you repeat that question again? The associate producer of The Wrestler, Evan Ginsberg, comes wrestling then and now. You know what? I think you look better with a mask on! Learn the super secret backstage moves of professional wrestlers. You know, he knows all those moves and can do everything, right? But <laughs> innovative ways of dealing with sexual harassment. We <laughs> actually did make contact on his nuts and it did hurt. <laughs> yourself what the hell is wrong with these people watch Saturday morning cartoons with Nikolai Volkov <laughs> what are you doing here Nikolai yeah save this child facing <laughs> the likeness there <laughs> good looking guy hear the wisdom of killer Walter Kowalski you <laughs> do so you become never ever be derogatory about yourself. If you're down, take the opposite stand. I am Superman. I am the greatest. I am perfect. It's a time capsule of a film. Wrestling then and now. Streaming to your computer, to your phone, to your TV. Download now. From the associate producer of the Hills, New York, Maria Pinello from North Bergen, New Jersey. Together they are Sage. Hey, 
I think about the past memories at last Remembering good times, forgetting bad Always on my mind, special times Always share how you care Now I'm thinking I want you back I want that back I want you back, back I want that back We played with toys, other girls and dogs Through to tears, sharing dreams A little older, went separate ways New plans changed our destiny I'm thinking I want you back I want that back I want you back, back I want that back Too young to realize What we had Now I realize That I I want that back I want you back, back Now I wonder about the spell of wonder Years went by, I still cry I miss your ways, those crazy days Me and you, the love now I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I want that back. I want that back. I want you back. I want you back, back. I, back. I, back. I want that back. Can I have that back? I want that back. I want you back, back. Thank you. Every night when I lay my head down to sleep, I hear your voice, I see your face, you're in my dream. I will never. I will never, I will never forget you Though I know I will never see you for real again I close my eyes, go back in time I can really feel I will never, I will never, I will never forget you. I guess I should have let you know. You always did smile at me, boy. I should have never let you go. What's wrong? What's wrong with me? Once we walked, you held my hand in yours But I never thought it could ever be something more Nothing more I will never, I will never, I will never forget you I guess I should have let you know you always did smile at me, boy should have never let you go What's wrong? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me?
face You're in my dream My dream, yeah I will never I will never I will never forget you I guess I should have let you know You always did smile at me, boy I should have never let you go What's wrong? What's wrong with me? Tell me What's wrong? What's wrong with me? Let you go. What's wrong with me? Tell me. I should have never let you go. What's wrong with me? I should have let you know. I should have let you know. I should have let you know. Thank you.
Yeah.